Speedrunners usually come up with some really strange solutions to the many problems they experience when speedrunning a game. And using the radio happens to be one of those solutions to an interesting problem in Hard Gold Soul Silver. Before we dive into that, however, we need to look into the routing of Hard Gold Soul Silver and how this solution may have came to be. Somewhere around eight to nine years ago, speedrunners were transitioning from speedruns without manipulations into ones with manipulations. Without manipulations, there was a lot of this. Ugh. These runs without manipulations were so rough that the route at the time would go deep into Cerulean Cave just to catch Mewtwo for the battle against Red. With manipulations, this opened up the possibility of starter Pokemon with perfect stats, guaranteed Pokerus, and zero encounters until you got repels. In those early days, speedrunners would stick to Cyndaquil and run through the entire game with it using HM friends such as Sentred for Surf and Cut and Spearow for Fly. And it kinda worked. It unfortunately struggled to take out quite a few foes since Quilava wouldn't evolve to Typhlosion until level 36, which is a level that took forever to reach. In fact, you had to go through the entire Team Rocket hideout and lighthouse after beating Morty's gym before you were even close enough to evolve. And to top it off, Cyndaquil was working with a horrible move pool of Flame Wheel, Fire Blast, Ember, and Quick Attack for the early Johto portions, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Lava Plume, and Hyper Beam for the late Johto portions, before finally ending the Kanto part of the run with Flamethrower, Eruption, Earthquake, and Hyper Beam. And with the addition of Pokerus and Perfect Stats added to the run, we no longer had to go and grab Mewtwo inside of Cerulean Cave in order to beat Red. Because for an any percent speedrun, you gotta go all the way to Mount Silver to beat the game. But using Typhlosion to do it was only the beginning of how far speedrunners could take things. Somewhere down the line, it was theorized that Raikou would make the ultimate speedrunning partner for Hard Gold Soul Silver, which would eventually come to be true, but the requirements for it were what made this dream so hard to realize in the first place. In order for this theory to come true, you needed an RNG seed that had a good enough Cyndaquil to beat the early game with, easy access to Pokerus, a lottery winning trainer ID, and good stats for the up and coming Raikou. But with the combined efforts of Pokemon Tasser, MK Dasher, and Speedrunner Worcester, nothing could get in the way of this happening. And so, the route was finally ready to go. This all started off with an any percent glitch route, shaving off one hour, followed by a glitchless route that shaved off 14 minutes. For this video, we're going to be focusing on the glitchless route. The first hard gold cell silver glitchless route with Raikou would take a big trip inside of Goldenrod Mart for moves like Thunder and Fire Blast, and later grabbing hidden power for a nice ground type move. While these did take a decent amount of time to grab and teach, it made enough of a difference to surpass Typhlosion with some really insane coverage. The only rough part was getting Raikou to spawn in the first place, because in order to get the correct Raikou to show up, we needed a method of manipulation that didn't change the date from January 1st to avoid hail on red, and one that we could do in the middle of the run. And that solution is to remember to subscribe to the channel. Okay, listen, I know a lot of people hate when I chill out like that, but I'm just making a joke, okay? It was actually wild Pokemon. By dragging the RNG seed from Newbark to Akrudiak City without saving and resetting or getting too many encounters, we could go inside a burnt tower, force an encounter in front of the legendary dogs, and know exactly how far off we were from Raikou through using a chart. It was quite complicated to say the least and could easily lead to despair if you got a bad encounter an hour into your speedrun, leaving you no way to get Raikou. What was required afterwards was even worse, because after you got the encounter, you needed to turn up and down in place with a repel up until you match that number on the chart. This was hard to do, and sometimes that number of up and down presses would be in the hundreds. This method was quite disgusting, really hard to pull off, and quite stressful to perform in the moment. And even with all this in mind, that method of manipulation would stick around for another five years, making the ceiling to even try the speedrun in the first place a really high bar to reach. But as I stated earlier, this would change over time, just like the route for Hard Gold Soul Silver Glitchless. 
Once again, bringing their brains together for a massive breakthrough, MK Dasher and Worcester were at it again. But this time, inside of the game corner, for Voltorb Flip RNG manipulation. The big reason for going here in the first place would be access to Abra for teleport, Dratini, 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 Dratini for water HMs, and the move Thunderbolt. All this combined helps cement Raikou even further into its speedrunning role, especially since it can now avoid all the slow escalators inside of Goldenrod Mart, the massive trip through Lake of Rage to grab Hidden Power, and finally use Abra to avoid two different fights that are normally mandatory by teleporting all the way back to Violet City in order to approach Sudowoodo from the other side and throw water onto it. And with the addition of Thunderbolts, we now had a move that could be used way more than Thunder since it had more PP and was way more consistent when comparing its accuracies. But there was one thing that still haunted these runs. And unfortunately, it would be the awful wild encounter method to spawning Raikou. But luckily for the speedrunning community, a speedrunner named MinnowSR would revolutionize many of the ways that we played Generation 4 and 5 Pokemon games. And one of those methods would be through using the radio. Much like how Wild Encounters could tell you how far away you were from the Raikou frame, the text on the Marion Oak radio station can too. When the Marion Oak radio station plays, it'll spit out weird lines such as, Shuckle may have been seen around Cianwood City. Shuckle. Only when you're there, you'll think that's one typical Pokemon. While these phrases may sound weird on the surface, they're actually predetermined pieces of text when using RNG manipulation. Because by entering the Pokemon's name, location, and two of those weird phrases into this Google Sheet originally developed by me and Skoa going into the game's code, followed by improvements from Swiftaloo to make it a little search engine, you could then get a number from the sheet. The number it spits out essentially tells you exactly how many times you need to flip through radio channels to get to the Raikou stat frame, since each time you go back and forth between the radio channels, it'll advance RNG by a set amount. And with a total of 457 possible frames to work with, instead of 8 wild Pokemon, the margin of error was very small, making it so that all you need to do is flip the exact amount of channels the chart tells you, do 0 to 5 turn frames, and finally run straight into the legendary dogs to get them to jump away. Then by following an exact path of movement, you can guarantee Raikou jumps to the route below and force Pokerus to spread to it immediately. With all these time saves combined, the current world record has gone from 35308 the Typhlosion to a 33137 with Raikou as of this video. But definitely be on the lookout, as that may or may not drop any day now, with Worcester on the prowl for what seems to be a 330 or lower. As all thanks to these crazy RNG manipulation methods that only using the radio could provide.